fellas, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good to see you all again. Yes, I know, I did say that I wasn't going to do a video today, but you know what? It's uh, Saturday, it's uh, gloomy, it's rainy, it's misty. Uh, what else am I going to do, right? Uh, and I also promised that I was going to start work on this generator. Uh, while I really didn't want to work on this today because uh, I was on this forum on Facebook and guys were debating e each other on what's the difference between the uh, little round plastic fuel uh, filter for gravity-fed fuel tanks, and, uh, you know, fuel delivery systems, or the cylindrical kind with the uh, paper filter element in it, right? And I was telling them about the micron differences, you know, and, and while the fuel pump uh, sucks the gas through it, right, the cylindrical kind, there's really no resistance or restriction of fuel for the gravity fed ones because it's just a uh, metal mesh in there that you know uh, prevents little uh, debris fibers rubber branches leaves to go through right um, so there is a, a difference in, in my opinion you know what I'm saying uh, I personally never um, encountered any real obvious problems with it but there is a difference and there was this guy just arguing with me about it you know so I think I might do a video on uh, what's the difference between the gravity-fed fuel filter and the fuel pump type filter? You know, that might be kind of interesting. Um, we'll see what happens. But uh, I did promise I was going to start working on this generator today. And of course, um, Larry says, Oh, I'll bet you you'll figure it out in like an hour, an hour and a half. Well, what did he just do there? That's right, he jinxed me. Let's say it is an easy problem, and I will get it done in an hour. Now that he jinxed me, watch. 15 episode series on this thing. And it's a good thing I put this plastic cover over it, because look, it rained. Now remember, the problem with this uh, generator was that, you know... Larry was one of the was the first guy to use this. I think it belonged in his family or something. And um, he says that it was running just fine, but it sat for a long time, you know. And then uh, it wouldn't start, no matter what he did. Uh, Bobby also uh, cleaned the updraft one-piece flow jet carburetor on this thing. And, um, you know, I trust him. He probably got it cleaned pretty well. But then they were trying to start it, and there was no spark. So, uh, while we tried to get, like, you know, try to find some, another magneto that would fit, because the diameter is different, a bigger flywheel is going to have a, a wider, um, you know, um, contact point there, you know, and you can't use, like, a push mower magneto because it's uh, more of an angle for smaller flywheels. So, the push mower magnetos won't fit. You have to use, like, a lawn tractor magneto for it, you know, because it is like uh, more than five horsepower on the engine. So he ordered a new one, and he put it on, he says it still won't start, and I said, did you check for spark on the new magneto? He's like, no. He just didn't want to mess with it anymore, you know, and I don't blame him sometimes. As you guys know, I'm very persistent, though. But he just did jinx me, you know, so maybe we won't get this far. Uh, I fired up my kerosene heater for the first time since I ran out of fuel. As you know, I went to uh, I went to Walmart and picked up some new fuel, and I got it all fired up now. Kerosene heater is running really well, very efficient. It's nice and toasty. Uh, even though it isn't that cold today, it's still chilly probably the uh, 40, but when it rains, it feels more chillier. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm just going to keep this uh, generator on the cart as like a table, you know. Not only that, what's the point of me pulling it down, breaking my back, trying to pull it down when if I fix it, it'll have to be transported out of here on a cart anyway, you know what I mean? Here's a good shot of what it looks like. You can tell by the muffler it's a Briggs and Stratton. 
This is the Flowjet One Piece Updraft carb, right? Updraft. Hatch, this actually has the um, sticker on it. Most of these things that I've seen don't have the sticker. It says, run for here, choke for there. But as you can see, there's no linkage that does anything unless, oh, I see. So it's just a butterfly on the inside. No, but it looks like it should have linkage, you know, the holes here. That looks like it's missing something because there's a screw there. But everything looks pretty clean, you know what I mean? And speaking about uh, fuel filters, this is the kind for the gravity-fed fuel tanks, you know what I mean? Obviously, the uh, here's a fuel shutoff, too, and it is off, okay? So now it's the fuel shutoff is on, meaning no fuel. When you do this, you're letting it out so that fuel, the fuel shutoff is off. Therefore, fuel is, should be flowing to here. Um, looks like there's another valve here that controls the fuel. And it is also open, so it, fuel should be going in here. But um, let's do that first. Let's test and see whether or not there's fuel, fuel uh, freely flowing. Here's a view of the other side. This is the part where it has the um, inputs for the power uh, the power cables, um, you know, your accessories. Uh, it's called a Dayton alternator. 20 amp circuit breakers here. 120 volts. And also has an option of 240 volts, which is very useful for you know, um, refrigerators or stoves. This is the top view of the fuel tank. It has like the same kind of um, fuel cap as some older Craftsman um, caps where it has actually a, a gauge. They seldom work because they always get stuck, you know, from age. But this one, yep, yeah, see, gets stuck all the time. So it's not accurate, you know, never is, unless it was brand new and well-maintained. This is the other side where we're going to be pretty much working uh, most of the day at. I hate I hate these. These are uh, the ball bearing type ones. Here's the two posts where you put the magneto on. Here's the kill wire that goes to the magneto. There are two tabs on here. I don't know why that is. The fuel filter. We're going to take this fuel filter off because I know we're going to uh, be messing with the choke. You know, it all looks relatively clean, you know. I have a Craftsman generator that I bought a little bit after Sandy. I paid about 500 bucks for it, and uh, you know, I I've only used it once when we had a local uh, blackout here for like all day, and I wanted to keep my refrigerator um, going, so I did connect that on. And you know, after years of storage, four or five years of storage, I never drained the gas with her fire right up. You know, so. There's something to that um, myth, if you will, about leaving gas in your gas tank, you know, in your machine and not draining it out, and it will definitely clog. Well, it doesn't always definitely clog. Before I got into small engines, uh, my Murray, my Black Beauty, I never drained any fuel out of it. I never even gave it an oil change for like 10 years. Always fired right up. So sometimes you just never know. Here we have the... Uh engine cover this is the old magneto the original magneto that was on there it's uh, charred and melted right over here so I'm not surprised that it doesn't have spark I gave him this one to try it is off of a uh, lawn tractor and it looks like it fits pretty well 
but I never had to give it to him because he ordered a new one and this looks great. Oh, and he left me the bolts. Good man. Now I don't have to go and dig for these uh, three eighths and uh, one half. Looks like it's in good shape. Wow, look at this engine. This engine is actually a 11 horsepower horizontal shaft. Briggs and Stratton. Looks like it, it's in great shape too. It's model 252412 and for you enthusiasts. Uh, 11 horsepower at 3600 RPM. Synchro balanced. Read instructions before starting. Uh, Magnetron, it says on the cover. Hmm. Looks like I need some Earl. The uh, coil doesn't suck it all the way back in. So it's probably just a lack of use. You, uh, yeah, it's one of those things. There's, there actually is a coil, but it basically just rubs on the... I mean, these two tabs here are the only two things holding it in there. So it rubs, you know what I mean? That's always been a, that's always been a, kind of a hinky problem, you know. Now, if it was on here like that, it would be easier. You know, from gravity? No, it isn't. See that? It's just like some resistance. I'm almost afraid to put lube here because lube, when it dries, actually stops it from you know moving even more. So after further inspection, right, while it seems like it drags and stuff like that, you know, it's a little better after I started pushing this in. And when I started pushing this in, it's actually spring-loaded. And I think it's just a coil that pops out a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this uh, toolbox buddy from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products, and it's basically uh, their version of the WD-40. There's an area here where you could actually see the coils, and they look like they're good. Like it's not rusted or anything, right? And there's a nut over here inside in the middle. You're a nut. I'm going to spray in the middle there. And I'm just going to work this a little bit. See, it still kind of drags. And it drags because of this, these two metal clips there. But I'm thinking that once this assembly is on the uh, shaft, right, there won't be that much resistance. <laughs> I hope, but I almost want to spray a little bit around here so that maybe it's a little, oh, it is, look at that. Look how smooth that is now. Oh, that's perfect, but how long will this last? You know what I mean? How long will the lube stay on there? Like over time, it'll dry up and be gummy. But that, that works great, huh? There's a switch over here for on and off. So that will be connected to the, I see. One will be connected to the magneto. The other one will be connected here. <laughs> hey, Larry, which one? I don't remember. All right, so look, we can't do anything. We can't test it without this recoil being on here. Try, right? So I'm going to have to just install the magneto. What makes sense is for me to install the new one, right? <laughs> So, just to preface, I have never, ever worked on a machine like this big. The 11 horsepower old Briggs horizontal with, obviously, this type of oil reservoir. I've never seen it. Um, I've had a couple of updraft carbs that were on um, ground blowers that I had. Um, and I think I only took apart one of them. It really wasn't too bad. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. Um, usually on this side, right, I, I actually question whether or not this is an OEM version because it would say this side out, and it doesn't say that, but it's usually this side out. Also, um, you see the magneto kill tab here is usually on the bottom for Tecumseh's and um, bottom meaning facing the cylinder, not 
the flywheel. Um, the Tecumsehs and the Briggs are always on the bottom. The ones that I've seen on the top, where the tab is actually on the top towards the flywheel, are the Kohlers. Uh, I've actually had them on there both ways on the Kohlers and it still worked. Um, this tab here is kind of bent, so I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. So I've got a standard business card here. Shout out to my friends over at Mullins Lawn Equipment. Ramona and Wesley Mullins. Go check them out on Instagram and check out the website, MullinsLawnEquipment.com. They're in uh, Tennessee, fellas. Very good outfit. Good people. Also veteran owned. You know what? I'm going to rotate this flywheel so that the magnet is pointed upwards. Hmm. There's your compression. And it's stuck there. Looks like they're, uh, actually these two look different. See that? Uh -huh. Larry had the other one in here where it wasn't right. So I, these look like uh, either 9 30 seconds or one quarter inch uh, sockets. Henry. You shouldn't use the impact to put those on. You'll break the posts. Yes, that's what people tell me. But I always do it anyway. Henry, you should use a socket. So it's a quarter inch socket on my quarter inch drive. And yes, you can probably remove these um, with an impact if you wanted to, to save time, but to put them on, and I used to always put them on with an impact that's, you know, just too hard. I have stripped them before or busted the post. Oh, I thought I busted a post, but yeah. So don't over tighten them. Just needs to sit on here. That's pretty good. Rotate this to get the card back out. Hold it. So basically the flywheel just has to be as close to the magneto as possible without it touching. So this is such where obviously you have to connect the kill wire to here, right? But the problem is though, what if the ground is no good there or the on and off switch is no good, right? it won't you won't get a spark from that you know so I'm gonna leave it off for now because we want to test for spark we can't test for spark unless we have the cover on there I mean I guess you could spin it with your hands but I've actually hurt myself that way before you know so there's nothing to stop this from getting a spark okay uh, once the flywheel goes around this magneto it creates that uh, current which goes straight to the spark plug and that's how you check for spark right uh, you can't check for spark without spinning the flywheel at a certain speed and uh, you can't do it without putting the cover on so uh, unfortunately just because we put this on doesn't mean it stays on we're gonna have to pull it off again if we find uh, spark or no spark and look into it but if we find spark it, then we know and, and then we connect these uh, the kill wire to it uh, with the switch and if we have no spark we know it's the switch or the ground for the kill. You following what I'm saying, fellers? Yes, Henry, we understand. Hurry up.
See, there's a groove here where it allows for your wire to go. So I got the cover on. Uh, I only put the nuts on a few threads just to hold it there. This is such where as long as you've got something in there, in the holes, it won't move. So it doesn't have to be tightened yet because I know I'm going to have to remove it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the um, spark plug. We're going to test it for some spark. any spark. And then that's full. I'm going to change the spark plug. Who knows? It was a Champion RJ19LM, the most common one. This is a Briggs & Stratton um, equivalent. Well, it wasn't, the, it wasn't getting any spark, so it's not the spark plug. That's very unusual, guys, um, for it to not work like that. I mean, I guess if I grind down the, grind down the contacts, you know, if there's any rust or anything. But honestly, I should have seen something, you know. And this is a new Magneto, so... That's a little bit of a head scratcher. You know? uh, incidentally, I want to tell you, when I was working on that uh, opposed twin project that took 14 episodes, um, there was a time where I forgot to hook up the kill wire to the magneto after I got it running and I couldn't shut it off. And then when I shut it off, I did it. But then off camera, I wanted to take off all the tins really quickly. And in my haste, I left the dipstick attached to the engine cover and I just pulled it out and um, I got it done but then when I tried to start it just to make sure I forgot the dipstick was out and it splattered oil all over the jacket that I've been wearing and while this was a clean jacket that I used for my ski trip it's now trashed put in the wash put oxy did three loads it's still you can still see I mean oil trashes your jackets for sure you'll never you'll never get it clean again so I just trashed my jacket I guess I'll just use it for uh, wrenching in the garage, in the garage. So look. Flywheel turns with the magnet here. It's magnet, it seems clean. When you turn it, oh, you know what? Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference, but it's, it's possible. All right, so here's the magneto, right? The new one. And if you look at right there, you see how um, it's angled and not it's not fully parallel, if you will, to the uh, flywheel. Well, it has to be exactly parallel. That could cause it to have trouble getting spark. Okay, because only the end parts here have that 10 one thousandths air gap and this will be way past it see so let's say the entire thing was that size gap you're not going to get a good spark so in this case we're not getting any spark so I'm going to take the uh, original one and put it there and we'll see the gap so I've just placed the original one just to the side to show you. As you can see, the ends are flush on the flywheel, and this magneto is busted. So the only thing I can think of is that this is not the right um, magneto for this flywheel. So uh, let's try my lawnmower, uh, lawn tractor one that I gave Larry. Another thing that just occurred to me is that <laughs> while I was talking about 
having the tab down on these Briggs and Strattons. Look where I put it. I put the tab up. So uh, that could be it, right? But then look, if you look at the one from my lawn tractor, right? This is good, you know? It's, it's matching on there. So what I'm gonna do is, you know what, let's just test the theory. I'm gonna put this one on the way it's supposed to. This is backwards. I'm like, nah, why waste time, right? Because it, uh, the, the angle doesn't match right with that new one anyway. I wanted to show you, so I'm gonna put this, uh, my lawn tractor one on there. As you can see on the bottom, right, where the tab is, this one has the tab, it says CYL, cylinder side. So this goes down against the cylinder. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to let, try to let you see this says, says uh, as you can see right there, this side out. So I uh, just line this up here like that. While it's still not a hundred percent perfect, right? The air gap is definitely a little bit less than the other one, right? But the problem is though, the holes don't match up, man. See, that's off. And this is off. It's this one here is too narrow. Man, I might have to use that one anyway. But let me go. Let me go look in my bag of parts, and I think I might have another lawn tractor one. We'll try it. I'm in my shed now. This was my blown 13 horsepower one. Of course, it's not in here, and I can't find it. Got a box of magnetos. I'm gonna try them all. There's a lawnmower one. Not even close to the holes. Here's a Tecumseh one. Holes don't e aren't even close. See, that hole's there. That hole's there. So can't use Tecumsehs. I knew that. I just wanted to show you. Here's another Briggs. Holes are off. A little more of a gap too. Here's another Briggs. Very off. Can't even see the hole here. I believe this is a Kohler. Holes off. Hey, so I found one that fits, right? But look at the gap again. Gap is just like uh, the new one that I put on. The angle's wrong, see? So you have more of a gap on the inner than the outer. So I'm going to keep looking. If not, I'll try it. So I just dug out all these from in there. These are all Tecumsehs, so I can't use those. These are Briggs and Mixtures. I'm gonna... So out of probably 30, I'm not kidding, 30 Magnetos, I found four that fit perfectly. I'm not sure what this is. This is like an aftermarket, maybe. But uh, if you look at that. Holes match up. Sort of. No, they match up. Holes match up. And look at the angle. It's very good. Then there's an identical one that, since it's identical, it looks like it fits too. I'm not sure where this one came from. They both look like that. Then there's this one. It's an original Briggs and Stratton. And look at that. The angle is perfect, right? And the holes match up. Now, uh, I could just simply use this, right? And I found the fourth one, which is exactly like that. This one has kind of a chewed up wire, which I found that it doesn't really make a difference as long as you insulate it well. The copper wire is not showing. But since I have one that looks fine, however, there is a reason why it's not on a machine and it's in my parts bin, right? It's used. But this is so far the best match and the best condition. So I'm gonna put this on. Since I'm going to put this in, I'm going to take a wire bristle brush and clean this contact here. Now what I am worried about is, what I noticed is, look, 
There's only two contact points here on this one, right? But look at the original one. The original one has this third contact here. See? wonder what that's for. Even the replacement one also has a third contact here. But, from my experience, and I can only go by experience, right, is that as long as a magnet goes through here, it creates current. Therefore, it creates a spark. While I'm here, even though this is pretty clean, I'm going to clean the magnet contact over here, too. It's nice and clean now. Okay, so I put the cover back on here, and uh, let's check for spark on this magneto. Okay, there's a close-up view of the spark plug. See if you see any spark. Yeah! Awesome. Let's put the spark plug in and, and give it a try. Okay, so let's give it a try. Remember, I did not connect the, the uh, kill wire to the magneto, so nothing should prevent it from getting spark. As you saw, we saw spark, right? If this starts, I don't know how I'm going to shut it off, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, it's on choke. I'm sorry, wait. That's run, so choke. It's on choke now. It's supposed to be getting fuel. Henry, just shut up and start it! Spray some stuff into the carburetor and see. Run. Back to choke. When that exhaust was blowing towards the kerosene, I saw the flames started getting higher and stuff. It was kind of worrying me. But how about it? Uh, I don't know why it just stopped, though. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. not be getting any fuel. It was running for a bit, huh? Let's try this uh, spray again. Run. Choke. This always has a problem because it doesn't grip on there. It has something to do with these nuts not being too tight too, you know? It wants to fire, but it just doesn't.
So I'll tell you what I was doing there. So while this was at full run, right, the vibration would make it want to go back to choke again. That's why it stalled the first time, see? So I have to keep holding this when, uh, at run, okay? In addition, it was at super high throttle when you didn't mess with this. But then when you turn this one all the way over here, it almost kind of idled pretty well, you know what I mean? So uh, there's also a mixture screw over here, but uh, I, I don't know how uh, you were supposed to throttle this thing. You were supposed to control, oh look. Well, it's missing some linkages here. See, here this is almost just like a uh, a lawn tractor where you have the the uh, choke cable or throttle cable in here, and it's mounted to something, and then you could adjust the the the, um, the governor, you know, the throttle like that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this one doesn't have one. I don't know how, you know, and it doesn't seem to move either. So it needs some doing, you know some messing with to control this. So it's missing some stuff for it to get going. And also, um, it won't start unless I, you know, spray fluid in there. Let's try to do it without spraying fluid in there. It wants to. So when I hold the throttle, I want to say open, right? If I, if I hold the throttle open, it'll start. But then when I let go, it won't. Well, how about it, man? Uh, I'm going to take off the cover again and reattach the kill switch so I can shut it off. Uh, in the meantime, I will go and research what goes there, you know, on the original one. So maybe I could uh, hook up some kind of throttle and choke lever. Now, while it does have a choke lever, right, it's, it's, it's loose. I mean, I could, I could tighten this and see if I could, uh, it, it'll stay still. But during the vibration, this choke thing going from run wants to go back to choke again. So I think if we just tighten the screw, maybe. But then... You do have an area here where you, you can adjust, you can put a choke lever here and control it manually with a lever, which is kind of cool. Just took the cover off again. I connected that tab to the magneto kill, the other tab to the, the on and off switch. So now that's off, this is on. So let's see if it works, okay? Um, just ran before, so I'm going to pull this throttle down. Put that choke again. Hold this throttle open and uh, pull it hard at the same time. It's difficult. It's 
seems like it wants to. So I kind of figured out why it wouldn't start again. I think this ignition switch is busted because it was on, so I took the spark plug out. It's got no spark either on or off. Ignition switch is busted. So it's been a pain in the ass. Uh, I spent a lot of time searching for a new ignition switch. Uh, this is off of that uh, snow blower, the, the um, a snow blower that I had. Uh, I wasn't even sure if the uh, switch worked, but I connected it to a battery with a multimeter in between, and it does seem to work. So, let's see if it.
I do have to figure out the throttle, you know what I'm saying? You have to manually hold it for it to, you know, idle just perfectly and running right, but uh, it wants to go really high because, I don't know, I gotta figure out the throttle, but uh, how about that though? Got it started, we uh, fixed the ignition switch, and everything seems to be running pretty well. I uh, just need to figure out a little bit of a, uh, you know, how, how this circuit works, you know, the throttle and stuff, but uh, how about it? Uh, we, what we did was we changed the magneto, right? Went through like 30 magnetos. That's what really took a long time was finding the magneto in a box of like 30 different sizes and manufacturers. We finally did find four of them. Uh, the first one I tried, which was the one that looked the nicest, um, worked just great. Started, fired right up, you know. And then uh, we saw that the ignition switch was messed up, which was giving us problems starting. Uh, once I figured out a right ignition switch and made this fit in here, grounded it correctly and wired it fine, it's all good. So uh, I'm going to need to look into the schematics of this and uh, the model number and, you know, figure out how the throttle really works. You know, what's the original throttle for this? Because you almost have to kind of hold it for it to be dialed just right, you know? But uh, either way, uh, thanks, Larry, very much for the, uh, for the machine. Um, while it didn't take me an hour and a half, it took me almost three hours, but... In all fairness, an hour of it was just looking for the magneto and the switch, you know. But uh, it's a good engine, man. Really runs strong, you know. You know what? I haven't tested to see if it works. Like, in other words, let me plug a light in there or something. generator works I just got to figure out how it's dialed in just right with that throttle you know but uh, that was uh, kind of interesting it uh, took longer than I thought but uh, you know what man uh, at the end of the day we got it running and an engine really runs well and if the engine runs well that's all uh, that's all that's important right now you know I uh, figured out that switch got the air cleaner on seems to work I'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers Okay guys, so I've been at this for another hour or so, so, so far, <laughs> I, I started this thing at about 11 o'clock in the morning, it's now 4, so I've been messing with this for 5 hours, so when Larry said I was going to take an hour and a half, that's uh, being very optimistic, uh, granted I, I did spend a lot of time looking for the damn parts, you know what I mean, uh, the switch, the magneto took a long time, and look what I did, I finally dialed it in. I got it right where I needed to be, turning some, turning some screws, turning some wrenches, and uh, I added a throttle cable for the choke. So uh, check this out. So uh, it's just sitting here, right? You're ready to use it. You turn the power on to my new switch. You got this right at the middle there, which I have a line showing that it's perfect, right? Choke. Run. Choke, run, perfect. Right there in the middle is good. Just pull. Now this thing is always like that. You have to just...
good generator now. See you guys later. Hey guys, John with Turning Wrenches, 85. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel by a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, mowersblowers.com.